I'm um, Victor Hackes, I work for Igalia. I've been doing this GStreamer B API for, for a while, and this is just an update of what's been going on after these four years. Uh, let's start with the basics. I, I know you mostly know all this, but just for review. Uh, BAPI stands for Video Acceleration API. It's a specification for a stateless video decoding, encoding, image filtering, and processing. That specification is defined and described in, a, in header files in C, which are basically this bah.h and a set of files for different uh, things like encoding, decoding, processing, every codec, and is developed and maintained by Intel. And it lives in that repository in GitLab. It's under the MIT license. But now what is LibVA? LibVA is a library that implements that specification that is in the same repository. And basically what that library does is selects and, and link dynamically a backend to expose that, that, that API. Uh, the, the, pro the problem with, with LibVA and, 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 and the specification is basically it's almost uh, Intel silo. Basically, external contributions probably will be rot. Uh, you have to push a lot in order to have some changes there. Well, what drivers do we have? Uh, there are basically two main drivers, are obviously the, for Intel, which is the i965, which is legacy uh, for all the chips, and for new chips, and the, man and the currently maintained one is the um, HD, IHD driver. And also there is the MESA driver, which is a very good shape for Radeon, for, for AMD. There's also for Novo, but I haven't tried it, and as far as I remember, it wasn't that good. And there's another driver for Microsoft, because now you can run a MESA on, on, on Windows, and it's a wrapper for D3, D12. So basically you can call BAPI using that. This is a bridge after a bridge after a bridge. Uh, it seems that it's working, but I haven't tried it yet, so I don't know. And also there is a NVDEC bridge, which is a bridge for NVIDIA DEC API. It's done by Mozilla, because Mozilla have their own implementation of BAPI for, for, for Firefox. Basically, it's they, they implemented the features that they require for, for, for Firefox, so basically is isn't working in, in GStreamer. GStreamer basically we use all the, <laughs> all, the, all, the, all, the, all the interface and in order to, to know what the driver does and its capabilities, and that thing are not implemented by, by the NVDEC bridge, so don't use it for so far. So basically, what is a stateless versus a stateful? Um, Basically, a stateful is you have a, a black box, you push byte streams, and you get frames after as, as an output. In the case of a stateless, well, you, we have to split the video processing in two, in two tasks. So every video processing we can split in two tasks. The stream state handling and the frame processing. The frame processing is where you do the heavy math. So basically, the stateless is they put all the burden for state handle uh, processing and to, to, to the application, and only the hardware does the heavy math. Uh, so basically, the application takes, takes, takes care of the, of the state and the DPB and so on. So this is when the story begins. We have this implementation of GStreamer V API, which does all the state handling and the DPB and pushes the the frames into the GPU or the dedicated hardware for that and get the frames back and so on. The problem is, well, it was technically brilliant because it was the first of the kind and it does a lot of things, but that turned to be a nightmare for, for maintenance because it was over-engineered, re they reinvent the wheel, basically they have their own G-object thing, uh, what's up, what's up? Yeah. and it was very monolithic. Basically, if you wanted to extract the state handling for the codec, it was impossible because they used their own data structures. So basically, no, this was not, it was impossible to do. So now it's towards legacy or towards uh, deprecation, whatever it turns. Because Senghua, he's, he's not here, sadly. In 2019, he's, he implemented the state 
uh, state handled uh, objects for H.264, H.265, BP9 decoder state objects. Basically, how, how, it, how to parse the spy stream and how to extract the, the, the frames at its headers and all that metadata required for decoding and to have the state of the, of the, of the block of pictures. In, two, in 2020, Nicolas moved to a shared delivery in, in Bath. Uh, and the same year, Sengwa added the BP9, and Junjan from Intel added uh, MPEG2, and in 2020, 21, uh, Junjan added uh, AV1. Uh, so basically, what we have here is one library for n number of plugins. So basically, we have one library to handle the state of each codec, so we can reuse it for many different uh, APIs for stateless decodings which is something good because we, we reduce the burden of, 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 of maintenance. And, and if we improve something in the byte stream parsing, it impacts in the whole in the, the other plugins. So basically, it's shared by D311, D312, MB codec, which is basically NVIDIA and CUDA, for V4L codec, which is a stateless V4L uh, uh, driver, for VA, which is our case, and also for, for Vulkan. Uh, so what happened in 2020? Uh, GSTBA was merged as part of that. You know, the GSTBA API was a different model, and now it's part of that, and it's shared the, the, the GST codex library. Uh, in the same year, we implemented the H.264, H.265, VP9, VP8, MPEG2, uh, decoders, and post-processor. And in 2021, uh, Junjan implemented the AV1 decoder, and we implemented the, the interlace and the H.264 encoder. In 2022, the MPEG decoder, the H.265 encoder, and compositor. And all this year is the big change of how to negotiate the MFOOFs. And in the pipeline, it's also a work in progress, there are encoders for AV1, BP9, and JPEG. Um, ah, one, one important thing is that, and, and it was already mentioned by, by Tim at the beginning of the day, now in master, well in main, sorry, in, in, in Git, the, we have demoted the GStreamer B API elements to none and promoted the rank of the GStreamer elements to, to primary or secondary depending on how uh, we trust in that in that specific uh, element. So basically, the big differences in a, in a nutshell between GStreamer API and GStreamer is like, well, GStreamer API has more features and optimizations, but they are quite bleeding edge and, and basically breaks the user experience for, for, for many users, for the common, common use cases. Uh, opposite, in a different way, GStreamer API is more re reliable and it's most functional for, the, for most of use cases. Basically, it's more for, for, for consumption for, for normal users. Uh, one important thing here is that uh, there is no BA sync. BAPI sync uses uh, an API for presentation, and it's deprecated already in, in BA and LibBA. So now there is no presentation API, and there is no going to be a BA sync. BC1 decoding is not yet and is not in plan so far. And in the case of encoding, we only produce format byte stream. There is no ABC, but, but you can use H.264 parse or the parse element to convert to, to another uh, format in the case of encoders. Now, this is important. Don't mix GStreamer VAPI elements with GSTVA elements. They manage the, the display differently, they manage the surfaces differently, and they won't understand, and you make, you're calling for trouble if you, you do that. Uh, yeah. um, in 2021, we, a, well, we, we split some functionality from the, plug, from the plugin to a library. Uh, basically, that, uh, that uh, API is for display handling, BA surfers as how it interacts with GST memory, allocators, uh, buffer pool, and the video format mapping. Um, that that make possible to share boot surfaces or buffers with GST MSDK, QSB, 
and also applications. Basically, it's like a more complete picture of how, how it works and share uh, things and resources among the panel with different with, with other elements. Um, now, yes, this is the important thing. Also, Nicolas de Fresno is going to make a talk tomorrow about this. This is, I guess, is going to be a big thing, <laughs> at least from my point of view. Um, how, how do we negotiate demo booths in GStreamer? Demo booth basically is a memory address that, that, that directs to a direct memory access on our address. And it's exposed to the user space uh, as a file descriptor. And kernel drivers uh, can export or import demo booths from other drivers. Basically, you can share this memory address, and the driver will tell how to access to that address to other, to other driver. So basically, that's calling for zero copy inside the kernel. And also, the user space can decide where to move or, or who has access to that memory area. In the case of uh, direct render manager, because it's basically what is rendering pictures in Linux for the kernel, uh, the DMA buff are called prime, prime buffers. And it was designed for uh, multi-GPU uh, systems. They can share, the, 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 they can move uh, frames, raw frames. Uh, but now it's used everywhere in all the, all, the, all the drivers for direct rendering memory management, even if they are not multi-GPU multi, multi -GPU platform. For, for example, in the case of, of accelerated encoding of the coding, they're very useful because you, you have an, a decoder that produces a, ROM, a raw frame uh, with certain characteristics that can be shared to the rendering manager so without zero copy. Um, Let's see how it goes. Okay. Well, basically, uh, the, 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 there's a different, there's a special thing for DRM formats. Uh, you cannot describe it only with the color format and the resolution or the size of the frame. You have to express other uh, properties of that of, of those frames. And basically, there are two types, two two elements, which is the 4 cc basically the color space, but that might, might be different from, from GStreamer. And the modifier, the DRM modifier, basically that, that express the layout of the memory. Because uh, vendors that decided that uh, certain access to their memory is more efficient, so either just, not, not, not just linear, that you put pixel by pixel of, of uh, areas or components of the mesh, uh, they, they, they split it in Dimension in two-dimensional spaces for uh, for that. So if you access to that, things can be changed. Well, and we will see in a moment that. Um, and every vendor has can can add their own modifier, and it's described by by a namespace in the kernel. So basically, this is the modifiers we can find in the kernel. To find that there is the mod linear, which is the normal one, but also there is a white tile added by Intel, there is formats from NVIDIA, there is formats from Broadcom for, for Raspberry Pi, and so on. Uh, so specifically in the case of tiling, even you can add other formats, not only tiling, but in the case of tiling, we have the normal linear format, which is a row sequential axis, what I already mentioned, and this is the other uh, tiling, for, the, what is the tiling formats? You have to define uh, 2D subregions of each image. We, have, we can have Y, but we can have X major tiles. So basically what happens if you, do, you don't express your uh, rendering mechanisms, what is the, the layout of the memory? Basically you have this. Uh, so that was a problem with just remember the API that produces images, zero copy with DMA booths, super efficient, but we didn't have in, in just streamer mechanisms to describe this new format. So everybody assumed that we were the the the, the decoder produces linear uh, access, and it was not the case. So we have some some problems. So basically, all this year we have to find a new uh, uh, or an extra field in the caps negotiation the capabilities for video. Basically, for the caps feature of demo booth, we 
decided that the format is going to be always DML, DMA DRM. It's always a format because the color format is defined in, an, in another field, which is a DRM format, which is in this case, for example, has uh, MV12, M MV12, but it's not the GStreamer MV12. Well, normally it will be, but you can define others because in this case we are using the kernels defined at 4 CC. So this is the MV12, and this and this is the modifier. But the modifier, there is obviously the what I what I show the name in the kernel, but it maps obviously to a number, an hexadecimal number, and that is the number, for example, for the Intel Y tile uh, format or or layout, memory layout. And that's it. the problem with that is we have to change almost all the video elements that even need to pass through that format because. It, 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 it is breaking right now. Basically, we can use it right now. Now, GStreamer BA is producing um, formats, uh, but if we want to, to see something in the, in the screen, we have to eliminate all the intermedia filters with the flags. So basically, that's it. And thanks. And obviously, your question will be more important than my talk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that last slide was actually a breaking change because now you introduced a new format and you are still keeping the um, caps features. Oh. So um, does that mean, uh, so, sorry, so the last slide that you just mentioned, you introduced a new format? Uh, yeah, that one. You introduced a new format and um, you still kept the memory DMA buff caps features. Um, so does that mean that any plugin that uses this uh, new negotiation, I guess this is not going to, um, I guess this is uh, a breaking change in itself, right? For, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, yeah, you, well, there is already, already a merge request for that. Yeah. Okay. So, in fact, the, the reuse of the format in the DMA buff, uh, DMA buff caps feature is actually a backward compatibility. So, by introducing, so this DMA DRM is added to the G, libgst video in them. So, it's an officially a format. But to support that format, you need to know that there is a DRM format. So, if you use that, if you add that format to your element, it's because you know you have to parse the DRM format. Mm -hmm in the caps, and that's our way to stay backward compatible with uses of the DMA buff caps feature that would use it with linear formats. Mm -hmm. Note that we did not implement linear formats through the legacy formats field in VAPI. We'll add it if we find it useful. So far, there's no user for it because all the users have been ported. So. Another question? We have plenty of time. Take your time. No, no stress on the time for the question. <laughs> so, um, in one of your slides, um, when you created this libgst codex, you have two allocators. Why, why couldn't you just keep the DMA buff? Why, why, why the VA as well? Why uh, not just? Just for surfaces to simplify, for example, same BA elements. For example, you want to connect the decoder and the post-processor, mm -hmm. they share surfaces. And they, they don't, it, it doesn't care what is below that surface. We don't export the DMA booth. We don't map, just share the, the, the surface. Ah, so it's uh, something internal between only VA exactly, elements to, to, themselves. To, to, to remove all the extra, extra complication to exporting, importing, blah, 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 blah. Just, this is the ID, surface ID, and I grab it, and I move it. That's it. That, that's why. Okay, right. Um, and, and also, that, that is used also for, for example, MSDK or QSB. Okay, uh, so uh, MSDK is also using the same VA memory. Um, okay. Yeah, the caps feature for, for, yes. PA, for BA, yeah. Um, you mentioned Vulkan in LibGST Codex, so does that mean Vulkan also? No, has Vulkan, is, Vulkan decoding, we will talk about it tomorrow, using the codec handling uh, states uh -huh. library. I see. Okay, thanks.
Another question. We have we are over 15 seconds now. If there are not any more. <laughs> Thank you.